Let's have a look at this unitary method. It's a fantastic method. You can use it so many places. So we're looking at the mango problem and we know that we have six mangoes and they cost $12. And you might even start thinking about units in your head already. You may, you know, if you've done a lot of shopping, if you know what six mangoes are, chances are you know what other amounts of mangoes are too. We want to know what four mangoes will cost. So you can see I'm setting up the information, I'm trying to line up what's common to help me organise my thinking as well as my notes. Okay, so the thinking before, is it direct proportion? So in any situation you think, can I use unitary method? It must meet two conditions. Have I got two or more quantities? So am I dealing with things that can be counted and I've got two or more of them. I've got mangoes and I've got money. I could have money and money. I can have two of the same thing, but yes, I've got two or more quantities. The second check for direct proportion questions, doubling is the easiest way. So if I double mangoes in this situation, would I also double money? So I ask myself that. If I buy twice as many mangoes, does that mean it would cost me twice as much? Sure would. This is a direct proportion question and that means unitary method can be my best friend. Now you don't have to use unitary method. There are rates methods, there are methods using algebra and so on. But um, this is a great one to use in many situations. So the unitary method is about finding a unit that's going to take me from the information that I do know to the information that I don't know. So I, uh, the first thing I do, which the ANSI guide doesn't do, but I strongly recommend it, is write in words what you're comparing. So I'm comparing the number of mangoes and I put my ratio sign to say they're in proportion. I did check that with the cost of the mangoes. So I know that those are the two um, quantities that I'm comparing. You should always be able to, if you can use unitary method, you must have some information about a ratio already. So a ratio that you know in, you know, all together. And if I go up here, I know that six mangoes will cost $12. So that's the line that I can put in first. 6 is to 12, we could say. 6 mangoes for $12. I'll even put my dollar sign there just to help you keep those units organised. Next I'm going to think about where do I want to end up? What's the last line in my working? What I want to have at the end is the cost for 4. So eventually I want 4 mangoes and I want to know how much that's going to be. So that needs to be the last line in my working. Now I can choose any unit that I like to get from 6 to 4 and I'm only looking at the side where I've got numbers to work with. I don't know what these numbers are. When we're working with unitary method you can multiply by any number, you can divide by any number, but you cannot add or subtract. Now you have a particular version in the ANSI guide, I want to show you a different way to go. You could work out what one mango costs and then work out what four is and that's in the ANSI guide. I want to show you that you can choose any unit you like. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply by two, as strange as that may, may seem. So I'm going to multiply, if I buy twice as many mangoes, it will cost me, must have the same operation here, twice as much money, 24. Now you might be thinking, why on earth would you work out more mangoes? But this is the unit that I've chosen. That's where we come from, that unitary method. What's the unit that's going to get me from my first line to the final line I want to be at? And I chose 12 because it's a multiple of four. So I didn't just double for no reason. I thought about what's the number that I could put here as a unit that I could then quite easily manipulate to get to four. So if I multiply everything by two, 
I've got the cost for 12 mangoes. My next step, I'm going to divide by three because that's how I'm going to get the cost for four. Whatever I do to one side, whether it's doubling or halving, multiplying or dividing, I must perform the same operation to the other side to keep things in proportion. So a third as many mangoes there is four. 24 divided by three is eight dollars. Now again, you could certainly do it in the AMC guide. If you have a look at the AMC guide, you'll see that the unit is not 12. It was a different unit, but the process is the same. You keep performing the same operation, multiplying or dividing, and work your way towards the final line. And that's how you know where you want to be. So I've got now a cost for four mangoes, and I just need to write my final line, four mangoes, will cost $8. Um, if I wanted to check, I could try another um, unit and see if it works. I'm going to do some that's a bit ridiculous, but it still works. I could say, well, if I started with 6 and 12, what if I multiplied by 100? I'm going to multiply by 100 just because I feel like it. And that takes me to 1,200. And I think, is that any good? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I'm going to, I don't know, divide by 200 because both are factors, uh, both are multiples of 200. So if I divide by 200, I would get 3 is to 6. So now I've found the cost for 3 mangoes. I've found the cost for 600 mangoes. It doesn't matter how you get to the eventual line. Remember, we're always wanting to get to four. Now I'm going to divide by three. Divide this side by three. They're both multiples of three. So now I know the cost of one mango and so that we eventually get to the end here, I'll multiply by four. And that's what I'm looking for, the cost of four mangoes. So I still get the same answer, so I've checked that I'm correct. But what you should feel quite comfortable about is that if you've decided to work with different units, that's why we call it the unitary method, you're, you're calculating different units along the way. If somebody near you is using different units, that's okay, so long as you're keeping everything in proportion with the same operations, you will still get to the same end point. So choose, uh, unitary method is about choosing units that are nice to work with mentally in your head. And we try not to use the calculator. That's the value of the method that you can manipulate numbers nicely and easily to suit yourself. That will get you to the end answer without having to do quite awkward um, calculations like trying to work out what's, what could I multiply six by to get straight to four. There is a number, but it's awkward. So you use as many lines as you like in the middle to help you get to the end point.